Hello everyone, so from mid-May to the end of June, I had to take part in a geology field camp summer course where we went down to southern Utah in Hurricane Utah to learn how to do geologic mapping. We left from Idaho and before night fell, we stayed near the Snake River in Idaho and set up camp before waking up early in the morning to head down the Utah. And I decided to film what I could of this journey. I mean, I, I was in class, so it was kind of hard to do a lot of filming, but I did what I could. And here we have some footage of us heading down in the Utah, which there were lots of awesome looking mountains. This was my first trip into Utah. Now Utah, as well as Nevada, and I believe parts of Arizona and southern Utah are part of the Basin and Range, which is a huge extension area. So you have lots of normal faulting and horse and grobbins. And we could see some fault scarps along the base of these mountains. So as the extension happens, you have the mountains that rise up and then the basins drop down from the faulting, creating the low areas that we were driving through. There's also volcanic activity or was associated with this event. And as we got down to southern Utah, the rock started to turn red and we made it to our camp. And luckily our first camp was near our first mapping area, which was near Quail Creek Reservoir. Now our mapping was between Quail Creek Reservoir, which you can see at the top corner there, and the highway. We had one day to map this entire area. We had to do a strike and dip, find the contacts between the different stratigraphal layers, and identify them to the best of our ability. So when we got to our camp, which is there, we set up camp, and then early the next morning, we arose and headed out to the mapping area. Temperatures were going to be hot. They were well within the upper 90s, and a couple of days they were in the triple digits, with I believe the highest temperature being 104 degrees. One of the things we rented out from the college was these Brunton compasses. We could do all kinds of things, like measure strike and dip, and these were a very important tool to do so. And one of the first things we mapped was this conglomerate. We found the conglomerate, and there was only one unit we knew that had conglomerate, so once we found it, we knew where we were at. The next step was to find the contact of the conglomerate in the lower unit. And a lot of these units had gypsum, which you can see here. Right here, it looks like we have a contact with the rock unit I'm looking for. Right here, we got some gypsum crystals. Yeah. Look at all that gypsum. There's beds of it everywhere in this unit. Pretty cool stuff. See all that mudstone. We continued to hike across this desert landscape, finding more outcrops to take measurements of to continue our mapping. And here is an example coming up of a perfect place to get strike and dip. Look at those bedding layers. <laughs> Amazing. We had to work in groups, and personally, I prefer to work alone, but we worked in groups because safety reasons, and they wanted us to get to know one another. But with the combined heat of the day, it was starting to get to me, but I managed to survive. In the evening, took a couple of nice pictures and did some relaxing. And the next day, to give us a break, we did something special. So we're out here and we're gonna go find some dinosaur footprints that are in the sedimentary rocks out here. Right over there's a massive thrust fault. find some dinosaur tracks, more of them in the red canyons here. We're gonna see if we can find them and maybe go to another canyon where there's some water and waterfalls.
The next day we began our final project, which was mapping the surrounding area and in the canyon cut by the Virgin River. This was a very large task. It took us about four or five days worth of mapping to go out to various outcrops, take measurements to make our final product. We began by starting in the canyon itself near the hot springs, which you'll see later in the video. And then we began what students call the death march, where we hike the outside of the canyon and down into the mid portions of the canyon and back out again. This was an all day hike and down below in the mid portions of the canyon are a series of pathways or water troughs. They used to pump or flow water through these troughs in the mid portion of the upper canyon. And here you can see the hot spring down below, which you will seek up close later in the video. Here now we are walking along the water pathways and they cut a series of tunnels into the rock um, where they couldn't, uh, where it was just probably easier to make a tunnel in the first place instead of going around the rock. But uh, here you can see we're walking in the metal trough where the water was flowing at one time, and this is another tunnel coming up. And uh, it was nice going through these tunnels to get out of the 100 plus weather in the sunlight. So kind of a nice little cool break going through these tunnels. They're, I don't know how old they are, but they look to be very old. And uh, afterwards, after we did the Death March hike, we then went to an overlook overlooking the canyon and the Virgin River and here you can see the vast area that we had the map and even on the other side of the canyon we also had the map a lot of that as well so that's what we did the following morning down here in this slot canyon or wash canyon whatever you call it it's gonna be another hot day and honestly I'm kind of tired and ready to call it but I think we got four more days left. A lot of work to do. I think it's the heat that gets me. If it wasn't for that, I'd be fine. So this is when we were marching down into what was called the Chinatown Wash. And this unit was a limestone unit. It had abundance of fossils, mainly shelled fossils. So we stopped and looked at them and even collected some until we got to the end of the wash where it drops down into the canyon. And then we marched on out and uh, it was a hot one. Alright, so I was able to get on my own for the most part. I gotta stay in sight of people for safety reasons, but uh, as you can see over here, we have all these rocks, and then we have these rocks. These rocks are mostly lateral like this, and these rocks over here are severely tilted, and we have basalt. The fault crosses right down the center right there, and I'm actually right on top of it. We have all this fractured retiated zone of just crushed and pulverized rock. So the right about here is the fault itself. So I'm gonna map this and note it on the map. And it goes up this way. There are several faults. Also some smaller ones over there. It's part of a offset or um, it's part of the hurricane fault. It's like a whole bunch of faults in this zone of the hurricane fault here in Utah. These are the hot springs, which are off limits to the public. See, there's some, I believe uh, they said it was carbon dioxide gases that are burping up out of the ground in the river here, or the creek, whatever you want to call it. There's gases, a lot of sulfur in the air. The main hot springs in that cave back there. So after we finished and turned in our maps, we then did two last activities. We stopped at a museum to look at more dinosaur tracks, and then we went to a lava tube or a series of lava tube caves to explore them. And lava tubes are 
passages where lava was once flowing, and once the lava solidifies or is gone, it leaves behind a cave. And this was a very nice break from the sun. <laughs> One of the things we also did at night was look for scorpions using the UV blacklight. We found a, about a dozen of these things. Some of them were pretty quick, and afterwards, on our way home, we stopped and looked at some Native American pictographs, and then we stayed next to the Snake River in southern Idaho for one last time. This is what it was like down in Utah. It was quite the experience. Hope you enjoyed this video. I will have more videos here shortly, and we'll get back to the rocks here soon. So, thank you all for watching.